So today we are going to look at uh, ascaris, uh, ascariasis, which is one of the commonest helminthic infections. So this is uh, uh, an example of how the ascaris lubricoides look like. They're what we normally know as the round ones. So you can see how the female pig and the male ascaris. So to start us off the round ones, which uh, is what the ascaris lubricoides are commonly known as, uh, causes the infestation or the infection of ascariasis, which is the you now the condition. Uh, so ascaris lumbricoides uh, are commonly known as roundworms. Okay, so they are nematodes, um, and they are large. They are normally found in large intestines, um, and that is where normally they live, and that is where they shed their uh, their eggs. So just to get a brief overview, one of the commonest, it's one of the commonest and most widespread nematode. Um, it's what, what the, the nematode that most people know actually. Okay, and it is the one that is found almost everywhere in Africa. And children are the one who basically bear the highest burden of um, this disease and we look at why that is. So most infections are normally asymptomatic, however, if we have a very heavy infestation, we have other problems that might come up like intestinal obstruction and then a nutrition being affected and we have other complications. So uh, in basically in transmission to understand the whole process is that first of all, the female um, Ascaris lumbricoides normally can produce huge numbers of eggs, okay, in a daily basis. So these eggs normally are passed via feces and they have to get the soil to get embryonated or basically to get mature. So they normally like a soil which is a bit loose and uh, uh, it's loose and a bit wet, not so dry, which has uh, good access to oxygen and uh, some temperatures that are above 15 degrees. Okay, so not a very cold environment. So humans are affected basically when they, they, they eat contaminated food with the mature eggs, so whether it's a fruit or raw foods. Okay, so like when kids are playing with things on the soil and that soil ends up having some of those eggs. And if these are not washed, okay, whether the fruit or raw food is not washed, and even if the hands, maybe on the hands, if they are not uh, washed, then the children um, uh, may put these contaminated objects in their mouth and then they acquire their scariasis. So that's why we, we say it's um, fecal oral, okay. Now, how does the whole cycle go? Uh, first of all, as you said, the human takes or ingests basically the eggs and the eggs have to be embryonated or mature ones. So the eggs now go to the intestines um, and here they hatch into, uh, into the larvae, mostly that, that happens in the duodenum. Then these larvae penetrate the intestinal walls, okay? So once they penetrate the intestinal walls, they go to the bloodstream and then they follow the bloodstream now going back to the heart, okay? So they go back to the heart and then they go to the pulmonary circulation, they end up in the lungs. So in the lungs, the larvae now, this larvae also continue maturing, then they, they molt. And then, uh, and then they, they start climbing up the, uh, the, the respiratory tract. So they go through the, uh, they go up the bronchial tree, they go up until it's coughed, okay? And then swallowed. Okay, so once it's swallowed, it goes back to the to the intestines. So that is where now they mature. The larvae matures now in the small. Now this is the second round that it is there. That is where it matures into uh, into adult worm, and this adult worm normally um, now produces the eggs. Okay, the adult worm obviously they mate and they produce the they produce the eggs. These eggs are shed in the stool. And then now when that person passes stool, maybe like on the soil, uh, the eggs are deposited there, then they take some time to for embryonation or maturation, and then now they become infective again. So if they end up again into the mouth, either through fruits, uh, contamination of uh, some food, and all that process, then it ends up in the mouth of the host. So this is what we're talking about. So uh, we'll start like here. So you see like um, man ingests eggs in food or soil. Okay, goes to the man and goes to the intestines. We say it penetrates the mucosa, goes to the veins or the venous system or the vessel 
follows the pulmonary circulation, goes to the lungs, and then uh, it molds. So remember, here it's in the larval stage. Yeah? When it gets to the intestines, the eggs hatch into larvae. Now the larvae is the one that is going up to the lungs. Here it molds, and then it starts climbing. Okay, goes to the trachea, esophagus, you cough it up, you, and then you swallow. And then goes to the intestines, the larvae mature into adult worm. In the intestines, the adult worms uh, give rise to the gravid ones. They give rise to eggs. Now the eggs go to the, uh, are deposited with the feces, then they go to the soil, uh, where now they get embryonated and they become um, infective and all that. Okay. So it's quite a simple uh, thing to understand. So clinically, how do we expect to see these patients who have this um, infection? So those who are in the adult home stage, eh? the ones who have these worms in the adult home stage, if it's the light infection, not so many of these um, of these uh, helms or ascaris, we normally people just live with it without even knowing so it's asymptomatic. But when it's heavy infections, then we have uh, other problems. Now, example is like intestinal obstruction. Okay, in the larval stage, remember we said in the larval stage we have the larvae penetrating the the, the mucosa, going to the vessels up until it enters the lung. So we usually have a problem or a syndrome that is called the Loeffler's uh, syndrome, where the lungs, the larvae in the in the in the in the lungs, the larvae in the lungs causes problems. Now we have pneumonia. This person will have cough and produce a sputum, which is bloody. Okay, so that is what we call the Loeffler syndrome. Okay, the pneumonia, the cough, and uh, the blood sputum. Then we might have eosinophilia because obviously these are helminthic infections, so we'll have a rise in um, eosinophil eosinophils, and then we'll have urticaria. Um, these ascaris might wander around and. Uh, uh, not just seeing the intestines. So the wandering ascaris may reach abnormal levels and cause acute symptoms like vomiting of worms. Okay. So this one might affect the breathing and you have a uh, breathing difficulties. So what you're talking about is like this. You can see the worms are coming out of the mouth. Okay, and nose. So this is because of uh, the wandering ascaris. Okay. Then you have migration into the liver where it might also cause liver abscesses. Ascaris, as we said, it can cause nutritional problem because it now goes to the mucosa and then penetrates and affects. During that process, it now affects um, nutrition. So you have uh, protein energy malnutrition states like koshako, you might have marasmus and all that. So this is what you're talking about with the low flush. This is a cough, okay? And you can see sputum that is a bit uh, tinged, blood tinged. Yeah, this is a... Uh, a uh, person who is actually uh, releasing um, ascaris normally will be releasing eggs, but this is a, in a state where we have excessive um, uh, or heavy infections. So diagnosis mostly, how we diagnose this is through stool microscopy uh, that shows a characteristic uh, uh, ascaris egg. Okay, we just take stool sample and we observe it under microscope and we expect to see this uh, kind of egg. Okay, for ascaris. So treatment is basically the standard treatment is with mebendazole, uh, and then you can also use levamisole or perazine. Uh, however, if we have serious heavy infestation to the point that we have like intestinal obstruction, then a surgical uh, um, operation has to be done to open up and clear, okay, like manually clear the, uh, the wounds. So prevention, as you say, this is mostly a hygiene problem. Uh, so adequate, uh, safe water supply is important and having facility for disposal of feces so that now feces don't end up, um, the feces don't end up on the, on the soil and then they get the chance for embryonation. Uh, prevention of fecal contamination of food then discourages of feces as manure because now again, feces as manure, then the oral food, uh, the oral, uh, the, the raw food, all the fruits they end up having uh, this egg. Then washing of fruits very well and vegetable uses using of uh, drying racks for utensils so that the soil doesn't come into contact with your utensils and periodic deworming of children. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you've understood something.